What are you doing with the extra money you're saving on your mortgage? Let's have a look. Good evening everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your 7-Eleven cup of coffee and I want to talk about, well, a question I put to the viewers. Now, before we get to that, this is about where you would, or what you're doing with the extra money you're saving from your mortgage. Uh, I've been flat out the last month with uh, the end of a project, just about finished it. It's due tomorrow, so hopefully it'll be good. Rachel's doing the door schedule right now, so I've come over here to do a quick recording for you. So I I thought, you know what, I'll just race and get a 7-Eleven coffee. And Rachel goes, oh, just fill up the Kia with some petrol. I'm still recovering. I've encountered $1.99 and 99 cents petrol, guys. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't put in more than 25 litres. I couldn't do it. I, I couldn't fill up the tank. That was 50 bucks worth of petrol there. So, But still, still, the only true measure of inflation is the price of my 7-Eleven coffees. Once they go over a buck, guys, then you know it's all over. It's just all over. I'll walk there to get my, my coffee and save on the petrol. <laughs> so... Let's have a look at this one. Now, the reason I asked this this poll question was because, well, I uh, was talking to a mortgage broker today, you know, an old fr- friend, and I was, you know, we were talking about just what's happening in the economy, how the market's slowing down a little bit with regards to housing, and his concerns of interest rates going up. And I'm, I was saying, you know, half jokingly, don't worry, they'll just pay interest only and wait for mortgage keeper to come or to the government to bail them out, one thing or another. But don't worry, I'm sure, I'm sure that everyone is taking all that savings they're getting from the super cheap mortgages and starting to build up emergency funds or dividend stocks or, or you know, stocking up for a rainy day. Well, he laughed at me and didn't think it was possible, so I put it to you. I put it to the viewers. I'm going to have a shot of coffee and we'll go through this. So, and this is only six hours ago. Let's refresh to get the latest results. So... If you've locked in your mortgage to reduce your repayments, okay, and this is for only people who've refinanced, what are you doing with your extra money? Okay, now, saving cash to build a rainy day fund, 22%, investing in shares for growth or dividends, and that's going to be our plan. Right now, I'm just, well, all our cash is in cash because we've got a big renovation we're doing. But once we're back in this house and settled, I'm not going to be hitting the mortgage. I'm going to be looking at, well, what we want to do, I've discussed it with Rachel, because I, I want to hit passive income. I want to get more dividends going. And well, the plan will be the dividends we'll use to pay off the mortgage, and then any other money I get, any extra cash, anything, savings, everything goes in the shares. So the dividends, the extra payments, that goes off the mortgage on top of what we normally would, and everything else is building up passive income. That's going to be the strategy we're doing. So we're still attacking the mortgage. We're still attacking it. We're still hitting it with extra, but that's money generated from our investments. Uh, Kind of to make it a bit of fun. We'll have to see. It's probably not the most sensible way to do it. We should probably be looking at putting half of it in super and doing all this stuff, but we'll do this for a couple of years and see how it goes, everyone. I just like the idea. Here's the thing. I appreciate the advantages of superannuation, particularly from a tax perspective, but I want to have... Just money I can access whenever I need it, just flowing in passively. That, that's the, the dream. So let's, let's have a look at what else. Crypto or precious metals to prepare for inflation and extra money. So the majority were saying crypto or precious metals out of 531 votes. Then we had 31% going extra money, question mark. 22% were saving it for a rainy day fund and 14% were saying uh, shares. So let's look at some of your comments. So, Fradstar, superannuation, 15% of my gross income. He's doing the Dave Ramsey baby steps. Fantastic. I'm a big fan of Dave Ramsey. You know, I haven't watched some of his stuff recently, but I have to, you know, occasionally I'll binge it. I like the debt-free screens where people finally get out of debt. That's It's so encouraging. It's good to see. You know, I mean, we look at, Here's the thing, here in Australia, it's a little different to the States, particularly with their mortgages and, and their property sector, although it's, it's heating up over there. 
what are our innovations here in Australia? You know, it's Afterpay and uh, Offset Accounts. <laughs> They're our great innovations. And Goon. Uh, Smoochie is saying, where's the option of more mortgage? I, I didn't even think about that, to be honest. I didn't even... I probably should have put it on there. You're right. I should have put it on there, but I didn't even think. Guys, that, that didn't even enter my mind to borrow more money. Wow. Bronson. Home improvements and some extra cash into the mortgage offset account. The better half is about to start a business shortly. Oh, fantastic. So that's it. starting a small business. That's good. You remember, you want to get a diversity of income streams coming in, guys. That's, that's part, of the, part of the game. Okay, don't you can't count on your your government to take care of you. You can't count on your welfare to pull you out of troubles. You got to set yourself up. So, you can count on them to steal your money. I've locked my rate in with the extra money. I just pay the extra money into my mortgage based off the current variable rate, so just paying extra. Off grid John went for silver. Randos asking about variable rates and rates and we're talking about um, what do you call it? Fixed mortgages. Advanced Dad, I chose Rainy Day Fund, but that's really not why. It is to protect me from the future interest rate rises. We're at the bottom of a long-term falling rate cycle, and there are real, uh, real risks that rates will and already are going up and going up considerably. We will see rates go up. We, we, we are starting to see it. A viewer reached out to me and told me the bank they're working for are going to put rates up tomorrow. We're going to see it, and they, they'll slowly creep up. Even if the, the RBA will, they'll you know lift the cash rate in a few years. No one trusts them. So what you got, what you need to prepare for is that once your you know locked in mortgage ends, you know your bargain basement price ends, that you're ready for rates to jump up. You know either refinancing it. Uh, you know I mean it, if you have a start putting a whole bunch of money in in shares that are paying you or. EFTs or anything that pays you monthly, boom, yeah, there you go. There's your difference. It all comes down to your risk profile too. So cryptos are purely speculative. They aren't a hedge against inflation. Yeah, I know that, uh, Reagan, but you know, that, that's how some people see it. Some people see it as a hedge against inflation. Uh, Sonia is going, been doing a lot more of uh, soft drinks lately. Why wasn't that an option on your poll? And Herbert is starting a small business and he's going into politics. I understand he's running, I think, for the Liberal Democrats, the LDP. We'll have to see how he goes there. I mean, that's interesting. They now have their alliance with the UAP. So, yeah, well. So there we have it, everyone. There we have it. You know, extra cash. The majority of people are putting it into crypto or precious metals or preparing for inflation. Then people don't have extra money. The rest are putting it into cash or savings and shares. So let's have a bit of a talk. I think we need to take the, well, take the stoic meditative approach of planning for the, or dwelling on the worst every day. Rachel's, uh, right now, she's investigating journaling, you know, uh, writing and journaling and diary entry. And she's found this person that's invented a system that's essentially just like stoic journaling. <laughs> journaling. Uh, I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? Interest rates can shoot up, and then you might be in a bit of trouble. You need, you need a plan for that. You need to make sure you have a bit of buffers. Don't worry about you know what's happening in the world. Don't worry about the things that are beyond your control. Look at your own situation. Look at your own family. Look at your own finances, and take control of that, what you can, and plan out. And have emergency buffers and things in place so that if it hits the fan and if interest rates start creeping up, you can live stress-free. And just worry about the important things like 7-Eleven coffee heading to two bucks. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this episode of Heiser Says. Check out this last episode I did discussing, well, hang on, i got to find it. What was the last one? I'm so unorganized at the moment, guys. I'm just hectic, guys. Check out this last one about asking if you can survive on the breadline. Check that out. See you later.